Now combat battalions were at half strength. Deserters roamed the rear areas, and those who remained faced renewed onslaughts. It was Britain and France that now had guns, tanks and supplies in profusion and could fight the kind of mobile war Ludendorff had pioneered in March. And the Americans were coming into the line in strength. In mid-September, they broke through around Saint-Miel, taking 15,000 more German prisoners. Back at his headquarters, the pressures on Ludendorff returned with a vengeance. The final straw came on September the 28th, when he learned that Bulgaria, one of Germany's key remaining allies, was asking for peace. Some claimed that Ludendorff had a fit, rolling around on the floor. His doctor always denied it. But what is quite clear is that Ludendorff's nerves had finally shredded. At six that evening, Ludendorff left his office in the Hotel Britannique and came down one floor to Hindenburg's room. He told Hindenburg the military situation was untenable and that Germany must ask for an immediate ceasefire, an armistice. On October the 1st, Ludendorff announced his plan to stop the fighting to tearful senior officers. One recalled his grief-stricken face, pale, but with head held high, truly a beautiful Germanic hero. I could only think of Siegfried with his death wound in the back from Hagen's spear. This was a reference to the tragic finale of Wagner's Goethe Demerum, Twilight of the Gods. And it was entirely apt, because a stab in the back would become Ludendorff's swan song. 